In this example, we're going to take a look at how to find the angular acceleration given the change in the angular velocity and the time. So the first thing that we know from this problem is that we have this record player. We know that it's going to be turned on, so it's going to start from rest. So we know its initial angular velocity is zero radians per second. And we know that it gets up to a speed of 33 revolutions per minute. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to convert that 33 revolutions per minute into radians per second first before we can do anything else. So if we know we have 33 revolutions in one minute, we're just going to do some factor label here. So I'm going to multiply. So I know that minutes in one minute, we have 60 seconds. So I can cancel out the minutes, and that way I get revolutions per second. But then I also want to convert this to radians. So I know that there's 2 pi radians in one revolution. So if I just cancel out the revolutions, now if I were to multiply everything out, I would get radians per second. And I'm not going to leave it in terms of pi. I'm going to multiply it times pi and just get a decimal equivalent. So 33 times 2 pi divided by 60 seconds is going to give us 3.456 radians per second. So that's going to be our final angular velocity that we have here. So what we're going to do now is just figure out our angular acceleration. And our angular acceleration is just going to be our change in omega, change in our angular velocity divided by the change in time. So now that I have my final velocity, I have my initial velocity starting from rest, it's just 3.456 radians per second minus zero radians per second. That's the initial, final minus the initial, divided by the time it took. So 1.4 seconds. So all I have to do is just 3.456 minus zero, so just 3.456 divided by 1.4 seconds, and I get 2.469 radians per second squared. That's going to be my answer. That's my angular velocity or angular acceleration in this case. So what you need to be careful on when you're working on these examples, not just plugging everything into the equation correctly, but make sure that you have the right units. So since I, I'm giving you the velocity in revolutions per minute, you do need to convert it to radians per second if we want the acceleration in radians per second squared. So the unit conversion thing is the one thing to look out for the most when you're working on these different rotational kinematics problems.